been there since a bowl game. And it didn't, you know, they did what I asked them to do as far as getting in the weight room and getting themselves physically better. And uh, spring practice, got a lot of reps. Um, so, you know, it, it's just preparation. And, and, you know, when a guy becomes a starter out there, you know, it's a matter of, you know, the opportunity, you know, that, that has been created by the moment and steps in and gets it done. And so far, I haven't been disappointed by anybody yet. Have you ever been in a group where you've created so much, or have you seen so much oh, yeah. turnover? In yeah, a yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you know it happens, hopefully not every year, but mm -hmm. uh, it's happened, it happened back in the 94 season when we went to the Rose Bowl, I had probably half a dozen guys miss part portions of the season, um, and we just rolled with it, and that's, you know, I've kind of learned since then, you have to prepare for everything and cross-train guys to play different positions. Can you guys do what you want to do on the offensive line and in this offense without three senior tackles? Sure. Yeah, we can do anything we want to do. You know, like I said, I have complete confidence in the guys we have out there, and uh, you know, it, it's uh, you can't look back on it, can't dwell on it, and you just you just got to go. You mentioned yeah. the kind of cross training of the offensive line. Where did that start for you? Did, did you, were you doing? You mentioned the '94 season. Were you doing it before the '94 season, or was that kind of always have, always have? But uh, you know, never been blessed with just you know, uh, ten or eleven guys that were you know ready to go right away. And so I've I've always you know in coaching tried to you know tr train my guys to be you know multiple in what they've done out there. You know, and it makes no sense if we're putting five guys out there. If you lose the right, the back, or the starting right tackle, and your backup right tackle is the ninth best player, and you've got, you know, number six and number seven and number eight sitting on the bench because they can't, they don't know the position. That makes no sense. So again, we're going to get the five best out there in whatever combination it might be. Do you recruit guys that you think can play multiple positions, or do you? Is that something you can kind of train when they get here? Well, I, I, from a size standpoint, yeah, I'd love to be able to have that luxury to recruit guys, you know, that are all kind of cookie cutters. Um, I haven't always had that luxury, you know. So, you know, some guys just by their stature, you know, for example, a kid like Doug Brenner probably isn't going to play tackle, but he can sure play guard, you know. So, uh, you know. From that stature standpoint, some kids are a little bit limited. But yeah, if in an ideal world, you know, I'd love to have guys that are all about six four, six five across the board. We talked briefly to Mark about this last night. But Cronus is obviously leader of the line. Is it feasible that he could get moved from center if you have to do, you know, seventh, eighth best player? Or well, the center no matter what. Well, you know, yeah, let's let's yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves there. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, we, we need to, we need everything starts with the center and that, that, you know, I don't want to weaken ourselves in two positions by, by, by moving, you know, someone that's established himself at one. So. There's an offense like Washington State's play into your offense's hands because you know they're not going to be on the field very long. Uh, you know, I, I hope so. I, you know, my, I don't know about play into us, Aaron, but, uh, you know, we just we, we've got to take advantage of our opportunities when we get out there. Um, that's for sure. And it would be nice to be able to keep our defense off the field and sustain some drives, you know, um, you know, and eat a little bit of clock up so our defense, you know, can can have a little bit of a chance to rest. Don't want a lot of three and outs. That's for sure against these guys because they can put up some points. Probably already answered this question, but I got here late. So. Um, Next man up on the offensive line. How how thin can you go? We're we're ready to go. And thankfully, we're not playing today because we need to rest a little bit. But uh, yeah, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. So you know, it's it's uh, it's just a matter of, of of plugging another guy in and and going from there. So I you know I, I'm I'm not going to dwell on it. I can't dwell on it. There's nothing I can do about it. It's out of my hands. And and uh, so let's just get the guys ready to to step up and play a game this weekend. Where's Matt improved communication? since he's arrived uh, on campus? I'm sorry. Where's Matt improved since he's arrived on campus? For you uh, he's he's a is just his physical uh, prowess. You know, he's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger, um, and you know he, he's he's gained confidence in his ability. So, you know, he's he's come a long way since he walked on here. You know, three years ago, and, and I'm I'm very very proud of the strides he's made. Do you have a feeling he, he could be the kind of guy he is? He said he didn't really even play football until his junior year in yeah, high school. he was a basketball guy. He thought he was one of those basketball guys. So I saw him walking the halls in Jesuit, and, uh, you know, um, I'm just tickled that he decided to join our program. Steve, you guys jump around. You guys play a lot of different positions. What's harder, learning to play the position in blocking schemes or the communication? Uh, they both go hand in hand, but I think just the communication, uh, particularly with our tempo of place, the pace uh, play, Jerry, with it, uh, you know, there has to be a lot of nonverbal stuff. We don't have time to have a lot of dialogue up there, so it's really just a trust factor from one guy to the next. But again, 
these kids have worked together uh, um, in, in different combinations since last spring. And, you know, Tyrell's kind of the newcomer to the group, and he's probably the one that still is, is not quite as sure. But the rest of the kids have, have been together and worked together, and I'm, I'm confident that, you know, they have the right kind of communication to, to pick whatever they need to pick up. You hate to see a guy go down, but for some of these guys, it's got to be exciting to get an opportunity to show what they can do. Well, they're prepared, and it's and it's just a lesson to, to everyone out there. No matter what the position, you know, you've got to be ready to go each and every week. You're one snap away from being a starter, and that, you know, unfortunately, it's kind of you know proven true for us this year. But like I said, the kids that have gone in there have stepped up and and done a very very good job, and we just hope to continue to grow from here. Matt said he was JV his junior year. How do you hear about a guy, Ken Potter? Tell you, how do you know when a guy's he said then by middle of the year, you guys were talking to him. How did you hear about him when he had, you know, there's really no film of him until that senior? Well, you, you know, you, you kind of, when you see a 6'6 kid, no matter what his size was, and he was only about 245 pounds then, but, you know, like I said, he, he thought he was a basketball player most of his career, and, and uh, finally, you know, like a lot of big kids, started getting some success in football, sort of grew into himself, and, and maybe realized that, uh, you know, his ticket was, to play football rather than basketball. So, you know, I, I was up a Jesuit and uh, Ken just kind of mentioned, hey, we got this kid here and you might want to take a look at it. And we did. And like I said, the rest is history now. He said he was a golfer. Golfer, basketball. Yeah, a country club guy. You know? <laughs>